cancel Camino. They cancel Camino. Yeah, yeah, because they say, oh, that's too difficult. Ah. I will show you one thing. Do you see the little white dot just on the bottom of the bottom? This is where we came from today. This is all about the first day of Camino de Santiago, the famous uh, route across the Pyrenees when you have to sweat like a horse and for 24, 26 kilometers you have to cross the entire Pyrenees. Today we're going to talk about the biggest Camino excuses and why are they there? The limiting belief attached to the excuses to attach because to the, the excuse. excuses come because you have some limiting beliefs we all have them oh yeah we all have them then we're going to get to must have equipment must have equipment trekking poles as well as the backpack and how to adjust it plus and walking techniques yeah and then we're going to talk about why people cancel their own camino or decide to skip the first stage Spoiler alert. Is it a spoiler alert? <laughs> but we have a way to do it. And on the end of uh, our meeting, we're gonna share a Camino Anthem, Ultrea Song. And, um, and you can learn something that probably can change your Camino, like it changed our Camino yeah. this year. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah. So, salut. Cheers. Post. Nasdrovie. Second podcast. Chin chin. Is it? Wow. It goes so quick. So we did the first day of Camino de Santiago, the French way, from Saint Jean Pierre de Port to Roncesvalles. And uh, we have some observations. Yeah. But first of all, just to let anyone know, this is only our point of view. Yeah. There is a thousand ways to do the Camino. And, and every, every way is right. So, what are the limiting beliefs of? people around the first stage? Um, it, they could be many. They could be many. It could be, I'm too old. I'm too old, that's a good one. I, I'm not physically prepared. I have no health. I cannot walk that much every day. That would be good if, if people can actually say in the comment which are their limiting beliefs. Yeah. From coming and making the Camino, or what is the fear that you have behind? Do you have any limiting beliefs? About Camino? It could be about Camino, it could be about everything. I didn't think about mine. Mm -hmm. I can tell you mine because it just came to me. Let's see. Sometimes I think that I talk too much. That's not a limiting belief. <laughs> that's the reality. <laughs> Maybe that's not the limiting. It's hard to, to know what is a limiting belief. It's something that limits your potential. Uh -huh. What's limiting your potential? When I say I have no time to do this or that. And I have always time to do this or that. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay, okay. Don't, don't take this conversation too far from your limiting beliefs because I know... What are my limiting beliefs? No, no it's too personal. It's too personal. Okay, too personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to share it. I, I would just write it on my journal. On page, I'll tell you which page, 34. What are the beliefs that are limiting your potential? And what journey? would be, what would be following the examples, what would be the limiting belief that uh, you can convert into um, a strength? Be yourself. Be yourself. That would be the way I can replace the limiting belief with an empowering thought. Be yourself. We didn't expect this casual a Camino de Santiago podcast is going to become something psychologically personal. Yeah. What is your limiting belief? If, if you have enough courage, put it in the, in the comments. It can be, can be about Camino, it can be about life, it can be about the situation. Well, the um, Camino in life is not that different. Mm -hmm. I mean, the limiting belief I have about Camino would be the limiting belief I have in life. So we woke up early and um, after breakfast, the community breakfast and singing together, we, we left Saint Jean Pierre de Port. Ultrea, Ultrea, Jesus, Deus, So we sang it in the morning just before we were going out. I already feel, I feel um, like. 
I loved it because we were putting our shoes, we were putting the backpack, and then we were hearing four people, four French people from a family singing. Uh, uh, I was like, what are they singing? Everyone yeah, well, just joined and like... And everyone stopped mm. and looked at them. And then it was really catchy. Everyone got it and started singing the refrain. It, were, it was like we were 25 people living the day and all of us were singing. And then during the day we were singing and singing. And during the 52 days we were singing, we were singing. Yeah. Mm. So um, we did early coffee, some good breakfast, early coffee and... We, we took some extra water, uh, extra snack. Mm -hmm. And then start walking. There are two ways of crossing the Pyrenees. One is through Val Carlos, uh, which is the secondary route, and another one is through the Napoleonic Pass. And Val Carlos is the way that normally it's open all year long because it's easier. And Napoleonic Route is closed from uh, November till uh, late March, even even April. April. I remember when I was there in April last year. It was still closed. So you have a chance to go the easier way, while Carlos is definitely the easier way. Um, but it goes all along the street and then goes to the mountain, or you can go through the climb of your lifetime. The leg breaker stage. Wow, or something, eh? It was like... Even for fit people, it can be something, eh? Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is too long. So. What is the, what could be the solution, the remedy? First of all, go to your own rhythm. Mm -hmm. Go to your own rhythm. You don't need to run. I have a better solution. Skip we, it? No, 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 no. The Camino Stellas, they don't skip the, the stages. Okay. We can split it in two. Okay. We can, instead of going from San Jean Pierre de Port to the next stage, we simply. Which is? Roncesvalles. We can simply stay in Horizon or Borda, which is just around seven, eight kilometers from the starting point. Refuge d'Horizon, desert, seven kilometers. Seven kilometers. Uh, and, uh, Route Napoleon. Uh huh. What is this written? Route Napoleon. And uh, why this is Route Napoleon, baby? Because Napoleon went through there. Go, wow, super, super. Allez, allez, let's go. Uh, the highest first kilometers are in the beginning. You remember? And then it's you're getting to the one of those two albergues, and then you can just relax there in midday and acclimatize to the different weather conditions, whichever. And, and then the next day you can start again and you have already, you have a lots of less kilometers to do. Horizon, they have a big albergue over there. Beautiful. Oh, really so in Horizon there are double rooms, there are community rooms as well, like a joined, joined rooms with the dorms. With the dorms. Uh, you can find your space and they also have food. So you don't have to take the food with you, but I would recommend to take. Just for the way. Just for the way, okay? It's there nice. is no shop, it's just a bar but you can also take. Mm -hmm. And the one kilometer after Horizon, there is a small little alberga in Borda, which is owned by the family. And uh, the owner actually was a chef. So his, his famous food is already famous all over the Camino. It's much more... Uh, family. Fam family, because it only has maybe 10 spaces or 15. And Horizon has 60. But you still need to book in advance in Horizon. Mm. We booked in advance. In Borda as well. Yeah. In I mean, also in Horizon that they have more beds, you you have to book in advance. Uh, so, um, because you don't want to have a surprise of... If, you, if you're planning to stay in Horizon, no. it was beautiful. Shall we see it? <gasps> oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's see it. Let's see. Hello. Ah, hold on, hold on. Hold show them, show them. Hold on. Hey, guys, how are you? As we said, that what we do. First day on Camino de Santiago. And show them the view, show them the view. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, again. Isn't nature not beautiful? 
and this is the nature of the first day. But I will show you one thing. You see the little white dot just on the bottom of the bottom? This is where we came from today. Okay, just over there, this is where we came from today. <laughs> what the climb, eh? So if you go in the French way, this is your Camino, you okay? Uh, we woke up half six, we woke up half six today. We had a little good food. We had breakfast with all the people, yeah, with all the pilgrims in the hostel. A beautiful, you know, a bonding experience, you know, bonding experience, just making things together. We uh, sang. We sang the song, so in a few days we're gonna know like this French beautiful song that we like to share because it's a, a really cool. You wake up and then you sing this song. Anyways, anyways, so, so we actually now in Orison. We shared the good song before the climb to get to Orison. Orison is like seven kilometers. You say, ah, seven kilometers, easy. Like there, this. there, from there. You see the white spot? You can't even see the white spot. It's somewhere there. <laughs> but it's like this. And come here, baby, come here, come here. I want them to see the view. Yeah. Well, <laughs> So we started and, and we walked and we walked and we sweat and we swear and then we sweat again and then we stopped and then we drank some water. Difficult. It took us, to how long it took us to get to this place? Three, four hours to climb. And we in this albergue called uh, Horizon Albergue, you know? And this is our, you see our pants and clothes this is what you're gonna do probably when you get to Alberga, then you will have to wash your stuff. Don't not to scare you off, but this is what it is. Lots of lots of drink. Lots of water. And yeah. lots of food as well, because sometimes you you know you you, you burn like thousand calories, so it would be good to have some some food as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So you in the long in the long spaces like this, for, there was no bar, so you need some. No bar, nuts. no content. No, you need some nuts, you need some uh, maybe almonds or maybe like a chocolate bar, you know. And in the French they have good croissant. Take it with you just in case, you never know, eh? Yeah. For us, the most important thing for you today, baby, what the was The highlight, this? the song in the morning. The song, no? Singing all together in the morning. Singing all together and, and it gave us this vibe of, of you know, because the song itself, it's saying you about the thousands of pilgrims that went this way. So all the pilgrims, they go, they sing this song. We woke up the next day and... Uh... And we start walking. walking. There's nothing to do in Camino, you just no. walk. <laughs> I remember this funny story with a lady uh, from uh, Jackie. Jackie from Stay. Uh, Jackie, Jackie. I had a problem with Jackie because I asked Jackie, Jackie, miscommunication. Yeah, miscommunication issues. You know, we all we do speak in English, but how different was the English, no? Jackie, have you been here before? And she was like, no, 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 I wasn't. So where did you? St I did a different Camino. Which Camino? From Lyon. I was like, Lyon. Ah, Lyon. Okay, Lyon is in France. I was like, okay, from Lyon but passes through Saint Jean-Pierre de Port. So I was like, so you know this place? And she was like, no, 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 I started in Lyon. I was like, but hold on, if you started in France, you have to come to Saint Jean-Pierre de Port, yes, so yes. And she was like, no, I'm starting from Lyon. I'm starting from Lyon. And she, was, she told me, I'm getting, in, I'm getting tired of this conversation. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm not getting it. If you're starting in Lyon, you, Did you go around it? You, you, did you go around it? She says, no, I haven't been here never. So I was like, why? And suddenly her friend who was in the front, he, she heard us, she came and she was like, it's not from Lyon in France, but Leon in Spain, which is just after Burgos, like halfway the Camino. And I was like, Mah. miscommunication, huh? Gian, Gene, Olivera, Steph. Gian, Gene, Olivera, Steph. Gian, Gene, Olivera, Steph. 
Thank you for being our new members because thanks to you, we can do this channel free for everyone. It's just small support for everyone, no? but for us, it means the world. But first of all, put subscribe to this channel as always because half of people who are watching this style still not subscribe. It's only, it's just a button you press. Red button. Just to press, nothing paid, just you show appreciation and say, okay, these guys are funny enough. I kind of like them. <laughs> They're kind of cute. If you want to be in the community of members, what do they get? You get the free content of so many videos that are only for members. I can prepare you fantastically for Camino de Santiago. So many Q&A available only So many Q&A um, live sessions as well as the extra videos. The guidebook. Uh, the fantastic Camino guidebook with all the questions and answers as well as virtual love, hugs and What else do you need? And then you can be extra <laughs> member as well and you can get the one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, if you have some special needs that we can help. Like some coaching, we do it as well. Be a member. Thank you. Extra water is necessary because from Horizon to next stage, Roncesvalles, there is hardly anything you can get. No no water fountains for four or five hours. Is it, is it actually an excuse? No. Why? Just take extra with you? Preparation. Some extra food? Yeah. I would, yeah. Extra snacks. And even if you feel like it's too much, you can always send the bag from one place to another. Which is also, for me, it's cool, you know? Because it, it, it's, it's some walking to do, eh? Okay, so we, so we started in Horizon, we went, it took us maybe five, six hours to go on the second day. If you just connected, have an idea and uh, put down in the comment, where are we? And if you don't know... Neither with... Uh, neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> This is the second day of Camino de Santiago, Camino Teles, Erika and Ricky. Hello. And this stage... They call it the leg breaker, you know, because all you do, you go up. And, and then you go down. And then you go down. <laughs> But you know, sometimes some things uh, requires effort so you can appreciate them more because this was one of the nicest Walk, yeah. walks ever. Another 30 minutes to the end of the stage. It's called Roncesvalles, okay? where the biggest or one of the biggest albergues is with the capacity of 280 beds. Just picture this. All at once. All at once. And imagine those smelly socks of, of 280 ah, people. I can't wait. Ah, but you have to live it, you know, like you have to go to to Paris once, you have to see the Manhattan once in your life. Yeah, and also today at breakfast I met a man from Italy that really inspired me because he had a lot of health issues. He had heart problems, diabetes, uh, pressure, high pressure, uh, sciatica, back problem. So half of the weight of his bag was of medicine but he is determined to walk Camino de Santiago from San Juan to, to Santiago. How, whatever time it takes, mm. he will do it. You see, I, I fully believe that the Camino is not the only um, a trek. It's not only a hike. Yeah, you're surrounded by the beautiful nature like this. Look at it's this. It's just the background. But It's this, just the background of everything. But this is the background for your inner discovery. That's, inner transformation. Right? That's what we think. By the way, um, so it took us a while. I think the, the first important part is the part that you go up, and the second important part is you go go down, which is another cup of tea. If it's raining, it can be really dangerous as well. Mm. So maybe let's talk about what are the necessary equipment and also the walking techniques. Yeah. What I would say is, first of all, the walking sticks. The walking hiking poles. 
The hiking poles, yeah. You cannot take them with you on the plane, eh? No. What I did is we landed in uh, Pamplona and I asked in albergue if someone had left their walking sticks, the hiking poles, mm -hmm. and said, that's here, lost and found. If, if not, you can get them. You can get them for 10 euros. They are really cheap, but you can also ask in albergues if they have a spare one that they can give to other pilgrims. If not, there is also always a shop in Saint Jean Pierre de Port. You can get them. They probably have everything. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they're gonna even have our journal there. Not yet. Not yet, but they might. They will. If if you if they if you don't still have our journal, probably you have to go to description and then uh, find all the information about our journal there. How many stars on Amazon? Five. How many? Hi. If you already got it, leave us a review. Leave us a review. We got pictures, really creative pictures from people. We got even a video. A video, a video review on Amazon. That Betsy, was amazing. Betsy, Betsy you, you are a star. You did. You most, are the most shining star. You did a beautiful. In the sky. But anyone, many other people yeah. did their reviews as well. Yeah. Uh, which really hard painting the stones. Yeah, it's really heartwarming how people give us their time to leave a beautiful review like. When, when we did the, the, the journal, when we thought about it on the making, I never realized how big the impact would be, how, how much of give are we giving and how much are we going to receive through that. Let's see one year after all these people have made the Camino. What is important in hiking poles? Many people with sticks. sticks. Walking sticks. Okay. If you have knees problem or pain, or fifth. And it helps you, you know, it helps you because, you know, normally you would be like bended, you know, when you go up, imagine, when you, or you like go down. give you extra support. <laughs> so you would go down, you would go up. So, so people will use the sticks, no? Just to let you know, we're not the experts of hiking poles. We use them sometimes and we know. I use them for the first stages. And uh, we have some good tips. Um, if you know more, please put down in the comments. As always, we're a community of uh, Camino lovers, Camino walkers, and many people on the chat that have been here uh, did many Caminos. And we can gain from their experience and learn something new. What else is important? Um, be not careful, but learn how to adjust or how to wear, if you wear the backpack. How to adjust the backpack. Because, for example, I wasn't adjusting my backpack in the correct way, and I had the pain on my shoulder, and then we worked through it, we, and we adjusted it, and now it's much, much easier. It doesn't hurt anything now. So the, from the Encyclopedia of Camino, we like to introduce <laughs> you to this word called the load lifters. This is those straps here, okay? And these straps, if you're going up, like an uphill, you have to pull it towards you. So the back sticks to you really well. But if you're going down, you just loosen them up. You see the space? And then you just balance the body. And Thank you good. don't have all the weight in your shoulder, so yeah. be comfortable with your with your back. The backpack. The backpack. I I remember how I start noticing the discomfort in my backpack on this way up and down uh -huh. because it was really heavy on my shoulders, and I was surprised because we walked before the Camino Portuguese and I was fine. Mm -hmm. It was the new bag, but I. I couldn't stand the... Um, I remember we were adjusting your bag on times. and on and, and thousand times. Thousand times. We were like, um, Ricky, can you adjust my bag? Okay. Um, do you... Yeah, okay. Yeah, it should be good. But you were like, oh, oh, oh. And complaining like uh, from pain and from uncomfortable sensations. Yeah. Spoiler alert. I changed my bag. <laughs> I sent my bag home. And I got a new one, and I was happy. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. In the middle of the Camino. In the middle it's of It's always a good time to change your backpack. Yeah, reevaluate and buy other. 
We oh. have a video about it. We have it. an entire video how to adjust the bag. Okay. So the video will be somewhere there. Just check for it. <laughs> Um, and the walking techniques, how would you approach the walking techniques on, on the first day of Camino de Santiago? Not only on the first day, when I go down, I always go, I zigzag down. The crisscross. The crisscross, yeah. It's just to um, lighten the impact, not to make it less down here. And definitely have your own rhythm, don't go with people who have different rhythm than you because you might end up in problems. Yeah, just respect your own pace. My name is Jessica Beatty. I am from the United States and I started in St. John Pride de Port. A lot of people struggle with about somebody like not really enjoying the spirit experience because they were going so fast. Um, I came into this with a really good friend of mine. Her name is Sky. She's amazing. Um, but she's an experienced hiker and I'm not an experienced through hiker. So I was trying to match her and match her speed and match the speed of everybody around me when really I needed to be taking it slow. Mm -hmm. So I beat the mess out of myself and I like destroyed my feet and had to like cut all the way back to like a much lower mileage and maybe take a bus. I took like two different buses to catch up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the first lesson was that I really need to be focused on my own enjoyment because why else am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Like, what else is there to be doing this if you're not here to make of it what you can with enjoyment? Um, we met this father who was walking with the uh, son mm -hmm. and they were going also in different paces. Palace de Rey. Palace de Rey, <clears throat> because the son was going faster. Yeah, so find your own pace. Honor your needs. Honor your needs. That's another of of the of the uh, subjects in our journal. In yeah. our journal. Yeah. By the way, this journal is only 96 grams. That's so much little grams for so much knowledge, huh? Eh? <laughs> so much knowledge. So um, we mentioned the Ultrea song, which is the anthem of Camino de Santiago, not the original one, which was recorded in like in middle age. This one is made by a priest from France and it's called Ultrea. Tous les matins nous prenons le chemin. Tous les matins nous allons plus loin. Jour après jour, la route nous s'appelle. C'est la voie de Compostelle. Ultrea. You know, when I sing, you know, I feel like I am a part of the bigger thing because this song was sung by thousands of pilgrims before us, before yeah. us and after us. And like the paths are full of melody of, of, uh, of this song. Melodies, stories. Learning this song will be a big part of our retreat that we're doing in May and if there is enough interest in September in Saint-Jean-Pierre-de-Port. Um, this will be a three, four day retreat for a small limited group of people um, that you can come, you can stay with us, you can fight your jet lag, get acclimatized to the place, food, water, rest. And what else are we gonna, we gonna do on the... Many activities. Many activities that will enhance definitely the not only the understanding of yourself, but will be the extension of, of the journal going through the inner revolution. It's a bit an extension of us. No, the journal is an extension of us. The retreat is an extension of us. So it's our learning, no? It's our lessons that we took from the Camino that we want to give back and facilitate it to other people. I think this could be something good, not only to set up the spirit, but to uh, understand more about the community, get to know more people that will start in the same time. So if you're interested, just uh, fill the form in the description and as soon as we have more details, we'll let you know. Happy days. Happy days. So what are the conclusion of today? Excuses part. Why? Why people make um, limiting beliefs? Why they make excuses? How? Because they are afraid. Limiting beliefs come from fears. 
And, and if you know your fears, if you know your fears, you can go, go around them. Mm. So I would just say, go to your own pace, respect your own needs, split the stage in two. If necessary. If, if you think you need that, mm -hmm. if you think that you are not... Sometimes you don't have to be also a superman. You can take yeah, it easy. Should Camino Santiago, it's not the... It's your own Camino. Yeah. You don't have to follow other people who told you. No, the first stage is from San Juan to Roncesvalles. No. No. I want to stop two kilometers after San Juan. Okay. And also Roncesvalles in, in Burguete, where they have a beautiful, beautiful albergues over there as well. So day number one on Camino de Santiago is definitely doable. 100 different ways to do it, 100 different ways not to die when you try. It's, it's easier than you think. Only take some precautions. Ciao. Ciao, chicos. So, ciao, chicos. Ciao, chicos. Dai, no te repita. Ma déjame que lo voy a cortar todo, mamá. ¿Por qué no me lasci fare cose? Perché ti repite? Everyone, they still have a, a syndrome, dilo, la, oh. la sanjonitis. Point. Straight point. <laughs> But, you know, I'm, I'm really curious because you say, no, 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 don't say, I don't, you say, you say, when I say, you say, no, no, not like this. You know, la. Like, No, no, I don't want to say. So you say. And when I say, you say, no. No, 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 no,